I'm neat. I think that should actually record fine. You're slightly in front if you lean forward, but. Uh, we right, had, uh, I had just got there, mm-hmm. and there was uh, they took the uh, first night I got there. Uh, we went up to a house and headquarters maybe, mm-hmm. company headquarters probably, and there was a German barn with a hay rack in there, and they said, well, go under, under that hay rack and go to bed. So we slept there, and next morning they took us out to a little strip of woods and a the pillbox there, and uh, I don't remember seeing the dragon's teeth, but that came on later. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> there were five five, six dead Germans laying all around the place. So we started cutting the swat stickers off the clothes. Hmm. And, uh... Why, why was that? Mm-hmm. Why did you do that? Oh, just souvenirs. Yeah. You know. So, uh, then we went back and under, I can see the spot now, for, there was five or six or seven or more, probably maybe the whole squad, which is probably only t- 10. It was supposed to be 12, but they never were up to full strength. Hmm. And uh, I just went in as a replacement. Mm-hmm. Someone had either got captured or killed or wounded. Or what unit were you in again? 9th Infantry Division. And 39th Regiment. Company B. Hmm. So uh, that night, uh, I had to take a leak and I, it was dark, and Mm-hmm. I moved just slowly and I hit a guy's helmet. He was a sergeant. He jumped up and grabbed me and said, what's your name? Because mm-hmm. he was pretty nervous anyway. He'd been in Africa and Sicily mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Normandy and, and, and get this. Uh, they say, I think he'd get killed afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was told. Uh, the time I went to the hospital one time, I was... Uh, Elizabeth, the cat went in. Yeah. You down there? Yeah, the cat wants milk, I think. Yeah, there he is. So, uh... Hi. Let's see, where was I? Sorry, the sergeant jumped up and grabbed you. Oh, yeah. Uh, But I didn't... So I finally told him what it was. He said, oh, that's all right. I just, uh, he said in Africa or somewhere, the Germans banded some of the men that were sleeping and didn't know who I was, you know. Because I just got there, didn't it, you know. <clears throat> so he was killed by our own tank, uh, yeah, our own tank, so I was told. Hmm. I never will know now, of course, anyway. But I was hoping he was a nice guy and he, Put me in for sergeant's going to put me in for sergeant's rating, but I didn't think I was smart enough anyway, so I just didn't push it. I just left it, and uh, and of course uh, he was killed while I was gone, and uh, so the story was told. A lot of guys, no, they were all new guys, but one when I came back. How long were you gone for? A week. Uh, that was after they crossed the Rhine River. They crossed the Rhine. And I went back and joined the outfit again. And we went. Uh, so when I, come, uh, when I come back, so these guys were, were new. They were. Most of them were, were new. They, uh, I mean, someone I. I don't think I knew any of them, before, except one. There were two of us, two older guys like myself and the other guy left. I was 12 mm-hmm. or 10. Mm-hmm. And uh, so from there we went up to this, uh, as we kept going, we'd go from town to town and maybe go in the town and at night sneak around. and. Uh, <laughs> even go down, get open up people's houses and and uh, talk with them. You know. mm. The war was still on, so we uh, came this other time. Uh, 
Now, just trying to think uh, from there. Oh, we were up to this town and we went in this German house and they were Syrians still there, so we wanted to sleep somewhere, so they moved upstairs hmm. and we slept on the floor downstairs. Well, that day we left the rifles there and went to eat somewhere and uh, decided we'd go steal a car <laughs> and uh, we stole a German Opal and took off with it <laughs> and went up around, riding around the hills and the war was still on. Mm -hmm. Of course, we shouldn't have been doing it. <coughs> Not supposed to go anywhere without your rifle. So we went up there riding around and saw an American Buick. Red, red maroon Buick with rifle brackets right behind the driver's seat, mm -hmm. and uh, the hood was uh, down, I guess. But we looked under; it wouldn't start. So we looked under the hood, and the rotor was gone. Uh -huh. So we went up. It was a big house there. So we said, "Well, let's go up the house and see if they got anything for it." So we did. Went up the house, knocked on the door. Three women came to the door. And they said, Officer, Officer. Well, we didn't know it was officers of American or German. So, uh, but we figured they probably were Germans. Uh, so we went down there and she showed us the door. And we opened the door and stuck the gun in. Mm -hmm. And they all put their hands up. Five officers, mm -hmm. German officers. And they all had pistols. But they wasn't loaded. Because the guy could speak English. Uh, he gave me his and he showed me how to load it and everything. He said, now you're going to shoot us? Hmm. I said, I'm not going to shoot you. And uh, so I said, I don't think anyone will shoot you. So they gave up and we took them back. Oh, start off and we had five more in that room, five <laughs> room for five. Well, how are you going to get down there with ten people in that little opal? And uh, <clears throat> so... So someone said, well, let's t take one or two Germans and take them out and go and see if you can find uh, something that to fit, make it run. And uh, so they did, but they couldn't find anything. They came back with a half track. You know what they had, mm -hmm. those tank legs on the back and and uh, wheels on the front. Mm -hmm. uh, Schwarzenegger were on the side of it, you know. <laughs> so... We started downtown. I was in the Opal, I believe. That's what that anti-tank, uh, what do you call it, was in front. And they stopped them every few minutes, <laughs> and so someone said, "Put your helmet out the window and wave them. Tell me, Americans." We said, "What did they shoot us all?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we took them back to the stockade and left them, tank, track, and all. <laughs> And went back with the opal. I guess we, I don't know what we did the opal. Put it back where it belonged or what? Seems like they tipped it over all the way down the bank somewhere. And then stole it to get it going. So that's one little episode. <laughs> we had several of them. But at Christmas time we were out in an open field, cold field. Cold and snowy like tonight. And the I opened up the trap door after I shoveled the snow off, and the guy had the 45 pistol aimed right at me. I, I said, what's the matter? He said, I thought you were a German and trying to come in, get in a trap. The door, they'd, they'd been there, someone had been there long enough to make a trap door mm -hmm. to put on it, and to, then the snow, when it snowed at night, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I shoveled it off, and so that's where we stayed. Christmas and New Year's, I think, was that one spot. But when we walked there, <clears throat> we hadn't been there but a little while. They said, "Run back to the woods, run back to the woods," and we didn't know what was going on. But pretty soon we saw a dog fight. Oh wow! Two planes up there shooting, and pretty soon down one came.